we're back with the final episode of Listener Submitted oh Month. God. It went by so fast. It did. It flew by. Uh, we've got our last email here. It says... Hey guys, big fan of the pod from the very early days. I even bought one of Scott's wear a mask t-shirts during what lockdown. Uh, I have a suggestion for you fellas, a little live broadcast from 1992 called Ghost Watch. It's something I'm sure was a big inspiration on the excellent late night with the devil. This was notorious here in the UK, especially among people who were kids when this thing was broadcasted live on Halloween night, 1992. I had a few friends stay over to watch it. It scared us so much that one lad had to go home and I had to get my mom to come turn the TV off as we were too scared to even move towards it. The BBC received a record number of complaints about it and it's never been broadcasted again. The premise is quite simple. A live investigation into a haunting in a suburban in suburban England. Two young girls and their mother are interviewed and a bunch of experts are brought into the studio to go over everything. What makes it feel so legit was the inclusion of TV legends like Sarah Green and Michael Parkinson, plus Craig Charles of Red Dwarf fame. I can't say too much more as it might spoil the fun, but I really think you guys will dig it. Keep up the great work. You're still one of my favorite podcasts. All the best, Garth. Thank you, Garth. Uh, question, have we done other made-for-TV movies on Horror Movie Night? Not really. Yeah. This is this was, is a was, first. Wasn't like Stepfather 3 or whatever you picked, the made-for-TV? Yeah, TV? I guess technically Stepfather oh, okay. 3 yeah. was. That was in, no, that was before Kyle was on the show. Oh. That was another listener submitted. That oh. Kyle was upset he wasn't here to discuss I was, that with That one us. bummed me out. Stepfather yeah. 3 is great. Have we done two? Have we ever done Stepfather 2? We've done two? no other Stepfathers, only the third one. So All right. Um, so (laughs) so let me ask you guys this question first because i am in charge of the plot summary Mm -hmm. i have the plot summary and i also have a a bunch of stuff about the history of this do we want to do the plot summary first or knock out the history of this first that's i don't know i don't think i have a preference i'm thinking i want to go history because i think the history will help people follow along with the i, I think so summary. too scott clearly needed some brain fuel to, yeah, to think about yeah, that I did. Uh, inquiry uh, this is um drecker brewing company from fargo i all it's called three greg tom lit and i only bought it because there are spooky ghosts coming out of this guy's Look eyeballs guy. goes drecker <laughs> i hardly know her um <laughs> i went with my with my uh favorite brewery my go-to Cautionary Tale, T A I L, with a little spooky cat ghost, and which I got meow. Pr- mainly because of the ghosts. Meow. And then there's a lot of cats that yep. happen to be here in Ghost Watch. So this was this was great, and this is my first pumpkin ale of the of season, the season. Uh, yes. which is really a nice way to end or end uh, listener submitted and going into October. So this is this is lovely. I'm very happy about all all that's happening here today. Yeah, we went from cat timber. Yeah. To Dogtober. <laughs> there right. we go. Perfect. Right. <laughs> All right. So here's here's a brief a uh, God. Brief. Here's a brief breakdown a of some of, of some of the history behind this this gigantic popular film, I guess. Uh, the story is based on the tale of the Enfield Poltergeist. The presentation contained realistic elements which suggested to the casual viewer, viewer that it was an actual documentary. The studio scenes were recorded in Studio D in the BBC Studios, and the scenes at the house and on the street were all shot on location about six weeks before recording the studio scenes. The phone number that was shown on the screen so the viewers could call in and discuss ghostly phenomena was the standard BBC call-in number at the time. Really? And, and was also used on other programs with call, with a call-in aspect. The callers who got through were connected to a message telling them that the show was fictional before giving them a chance to share their own ghost stories for future, possibly for future writing of story episodes of Ghost Watch. However, the show was so popular and the phone number was only connected to five lines that most people just kept getting a busy nut sign and never getting the confirmation that everything they were watching was fictional. Yeah. The BBC, however, became concerns about the effects of the broadcast and what it would have on the public and almost pulled the show just before the broadcast. Ultimately, they insisted on adding opening credits, including a writer's name, uh, to try to hint at it. Ghostwatch aired under the Screen One drama banner. It's documentary style led many viewers to believe that the events were real, causing controversy after the show's airing. Uh, they were hit with a bunch of phone callers and stuff like that. An 18-year-old who suffered from learning difficulties 
uh, and had the mental age of 13, died by suicide five days after the program aired. Whoa. The family home had suffered a faulty central heating system that caused pipes to sound like they were knocking. He linked this to the activity of the show, causing him great worry, and left a note reading, if there really are ghosts, I will be with you with, as a ghost then. Um, his mother and stepfather That's blamed the BBC. Dark. Yeah. yeah. They blame the BBC. They claim that Martin was hypnotized and obsessed by the program. Um, the Broadcasting Standards Commission refused their complaint, along with 34 others, uh, as being outside the high court's uh, decision. However, it was eventually brought and they heard. The BBC offered an apology and all of that. Um, but the film's producers continue to argue that Ghostwatch did air during a drama slot after 9 p.m., uh, and should have been recognized as fiction for the vast majority crazy, of it. It's because it happens in the flick. Like, yeah. the, I'm sorry, and you're probably going to point this out, but just yeah. the references of what's happening with the actual airing versus the film itself and the story plots and the story beats is fascinating. <laughs> yeah, and they and that was kind of their argument was that they the the public said you needed to make it more clear that it was fictional. And the producer's argument was it wouldn't have been effective if we had done that. Mm -hmm. right. um, so it, it leads to a, it's it's kind of an interesting like morality case, mm -hmm. I guess, at the same time. Anyway, it's talking about this movie. The plot summary is very simple. You know, what I mean, it is yeah. a 90 minute television special. They're going to go into a haunted house and there's some twists and turns. But where we've seen this before, we've seen Late Night with the Devil potential double feature we've seen wnuf halloween special i'll stop saying other potential double features but like the difference between those movies and this was obviously a that it was airing on tv and mm -hmm. that they hired all of the presenters that the audience would have been familiar with as like trusted journalists and news yeah. sources to play themselves really gave it this air of realism that mm -hmm. kind of is awesome in a certain yeah. way what I think is my favorite part of this entire movie, and then we'll dive into the very brief summary, is there's this scene about 25 minutes into the movie where someone calls in and says that they saw a shadowy figure in the bedroom footage, and they go and like meticulously analyze it and then debunk it. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they debunk it like is such a great yeah. trick in really making it feel real because any other movie would have made that a scary scene. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the fact that it's such an ordinary, almost bl like I was talking about this with someone else and they were saying like the blandness is what makes it effective because yes. it feels, mm -hmm. it feels too boring to be fictional. There's for, no, there's no like, cynicism uh, like, throughout. Like, and I felt like that's like, that's also luckily that's they're British. British. That's yeah. British. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I think that being British is helpful in this scenario, but there is that. I, I totally agree. There's like no cynicism. There is like a really like cut and dry way to handle the things that are happening live, uh, yeah. you know, and to also fill dead air like they do act actively have to fill dead air mm -hmm. as they just sit and wait and it wait it feels like wait. a legitimate live yeah. it's broadcast. Oh, the pacing of it is fucking <laughs> wild this is my yeah. first time watching it I don't and know, everybody's about... likable i do yes. Yes. They're, they're very i mean like their tv personalities it makes a even lot the hokey, of sense like even the hokey tv personality who like sings the exorcist theme and yeah. like does the you know like he's great like but i yeah, love when we cut back but to he him. was Again, that's Craig Charles. He was a genuine, like, popular BBC Wild. comedian at the time. He felt like an MTV VJ. Like, yes. it was like he had that energy, and I appreciated that. Yeah, like, I mean, for, for I've never watched Red Dwarf, but from what mm -hmm. my understanding is, it's very similar to, like, a Hitchhiker's Guide in the Galaxy mm -hmm. yeah. BBC yeah. show. It's a comedy in outer space. Like, yeah. it's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the, the actual beats of this show, though... Uh, or this movie, movie uh, is that we are start off. We start off by seeing this video of tricked. two of two sisters, and they're in their room, and it's about three in the morning when the one gets up, turns on the lights, and all of a sudden they start hearing the banging. The lights start flickering. A light bulb explodes, and we're informed that this is what we're going to be investigating for the next ninety minutes. We're going to go into this house. We've got a paranormal expert with us. We also have a paranormal denier with us, and we're going to try to figure this all out 
Um, we're also introduced to Sarah Green, who we mentioned earlier, uh, and she's going to be with the family inside the house while Michael Parkson is going to be handling things in the main studio and talking to the experts about their reads on stuff. Uh, they're taking phone calls from viewers throughout, and they're providing their own like experiences with the paranormal, and it's, it's really uniquely done at this point. Um, we learn that the ghost is referred to as pipes in this house. Uh, and I love this explanation because the first time they heard the banging, the mom said that it was probably just the pipes in the house. And then the girls, it's such a realistic understanding of children mm -hmm, yeah. that they would just continue to refer to the noises as pipes, as pipes. And then it would slowly turn into Mr. Pipes and it would become this personality. Yeah. Um, it's, it's perfect. I do love that. Like it's so perfectly paced and like the listeners are calling with these kind of dumb paranormal stories that the hosts laugh off and then as the show continues it's like people are calling because they're concerned that their family members won't stop staring at the television and mm -hmm. like it's starting to become like more immediate and then we learn a little bit more as viewers about mr pipes from two different phone calls we get the phone call where one person talks about uh, it's two different people who lived in the same home. The first one was Mother Sedans, I think it's how it's pronounced, who mm. murdered children while she lived in that house. Mm. And then the next call is a social worker talking about Raymond Turnstall, who lived in that house but swore that the spirit of a woman was slowly taking over his body and that led to him taking his own life. And we're led to believe from that information that Pipes is some amalgamation of both of those spirits now is like one vindictive as like, entity as like a true like poltergeist because then they yeah. also yeah. talk about the beats of like what a poltergeist is versus some other hauntings and some other like ho not hoax but hokier ghost yeah. stories that get sprinkled in too so it's it is cool it is also a cool way to like differentiate between you know because also as ghost watch the show happens you're expected to have an understanding of some sort of like haunted things haunted programming and like right, these yeah. series of mm -hmm. things you know you're not you're not treated like a dummy uh which i appreciate but you're also given the education and like the steps to follow to to believe this well and then there's a point in the show where it's revealed that maybe this haunting is a hoax right oh, mm -hmm. god it got me dude i did not like <laughs> I, I i was i i knew i knew of what like what ghost watch did to people like as a, a as a cultural thing but mm -hmm. i did not know the beats of the story so when i when it was a hoax i was like oh my god where do we go from here like, what, this blind, what's gonna i'm kind of jealous of you going yeah. into this blind, so you both like, had seen it before blind, blind. Yes, I I literally okay. just saw it maybe two or three months earlier when it dropped on Shutter. Okay. Shutter. But I've yeah, been yeah, yeah. hearing about it for years. years. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it was a pretty cool it, get when Shutter brought it on. In my opinion, yeah. it was. I didn't expect to see it in that capacity. It was cool, and it's great quality. I mean, Shutter. Yeah. There there could have been a version of this that was like someone's VHS tape <laughs> that they taped the one time it aired. Scott, when did you first see it? I saw it on Internet Archive years ago, because um, okay. that that was one of the only. I was the only place you could find it for a yeah. very very long time. Yeah, and it was a much better okay. better copy than that. Well, and yeah. I I almost want to track down the DVD apparently or a Blu-ray. There was a Blu-ray that came out. I want to say in two thousand eight. 18 or something like that 2017 it was it was yeah it was for an anniversary but it comes with a like behind the scenes making of documentary no. that i absolutely want to watch oh, like i wow, want to yeah. dive into that um so they do even after the hoax portion uh dr lynn who is the the expert that they have in the studio is insistent that no there's still something happening here she even says something along the lines of like, I'm almost confident this poltergeist is intentionally trying to muddy the waters for us. And like, mm -hmm. then things start to get crazy where like there are now lacerations on one of the girl's faces and the girls are acting increasingly more weird. Um, and we cut back to like them taking the phone calls and this last, we're already in the last 10 minutes because it, it, not a lot happens, but everything happens. Like yeah. at the same mm -hmm. time, it's yeah. like not a lot happens, but you there's not much you could cut that wouldn't hurt the effectiveness of the last like 10, 15 minutes of this movie. Mm -hmm. It's every it's that moment when Dr. Lin realizes that a picture that they saw get broken earlier in the broadcast is back on the wall and perfectly fine. And she's like, something's tampering with the feed. That's that's replay footage from earlier. 
we've got to go to live footage and it's like immediately we just cut to chaos yeah. <laughs> like it is like people screaming the little girl is yelling to mr pipes being like why are you doing this i did everything you asked <laughs> like it's it's in fucking sane and that's when Dr. Lin realizes that by doing this broadcast, they have created a giant seance that has let pipes into every home of every house that has their televisions on right now, which is such a great like that's like straight up like the tingler, right? Like it's in the yeah. audience with it's you. In, yeah. right? <laughs> like, it's it's such a good fake out. You can't and, name any more movies, please. I yeah, know no, it wasn't Matt, on like, the button, actually, like, I'm just nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, like the more Matt talks and this is not just this episode. The, I'm noticing this is becoming a bigger problem because now we're doing these plot descriptions. Matt is just fucking blabbing. Oh, it's you could still use this for. Uh, uh, Look, a, I'm going to uh, use feature. one of the things Listen, I said as I my double feature, fuck, but yeah, Matt, <laughs> you have to make people want to listen to our double features section. Okay. You can't I'm give sorry. A, I'm sorry. The, the, I'm getting the, yelled at on the air. This is so embarrassing. Um, <laughs> but then like the first two years of horror movie yeah. had all over again. Yeah. Oh, I just thought I was over this. Um, I love this weird ending where like the mm. studio empties out and and Michael Parkinson is just wandering around aimlessly kind of like unaffectedly narrating what he's seeing he's yeah. the captain of the ship too yeah he's go, like yes. you know he's Gotta like go he's going down but but then in the final like two seconds it's implied like oh he's also possessed like yeah. he's mm-hmm. also been fully mm-hmm. possessed and then just cut to credits <laughs> like yeah. it's awesome I, it's a gnarly little flick it's i it, think it i liked fun. watching this more the second time because like i knew where it was going so i was yeah. paying I mean, so much more attention to how like i I don't want to throw this around often, but like how masterfully paced out this yeah. was. Yeah. Like the way that it makes it feel so real and effective. Yeah. It it really is like a film, as much as people will compare it to other films, there will be movies that come out and they'll be like, oh, this is like Ghost Watch. You really could never have anything else like Ghost Watch. This to television is very much what like yeah. the War of the Worlds radio broadcast was. Yeah, like, of course. it only worked one time, and no one will ever be yeah. able to replicate that success again. No, because it, it, it is it is a perfect uh, amalgamation and also representation and also parody, and it's like all of these things of a of a pre existing thing that is so. Uh, momentary and so specific and there will be another ghost watch but it won't be really in comparison because it has to be some other representation of a thing right? media. Like, yeah it's, it's going to be a completely different media and it's going to be really interesting and I think that you know I mean not not for anything but host is it, that in some ways yep. probably the I'm oh, sorry shit I probably wait, fucking now Kyle's <laughs> doing it too <laughs> <laughs> God damn it! I it was not We're on my radar, business. and I said it, and I'm like, God, bless it. But, this 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 podcast is also going to be completely possessed by by double features, and no, we're all like, going to kill each other somehow. But I feel like Ghostwatch. This is going to be a weird comparison, but it's it's a legitimate comparison in my mind. It's the reason Ghostwatch works, and there there can't be another one the same way that like. By the time they started making Jackass oh. movies, okay. they okay. had they had to start pranking each other, yes, because they were all too famous, yeah. to like be able to do yeah. the person on the street pranks anymore. Or it's yeah. why um, Borat, like, you know, he would just do he would have to do different characters for every movie because Borat was so massive that mm-hmm. he couldn't just do a second Borat movie like three years later because everyone right. now knows who I that mean, character they did is. Borat movie. But it was like it was like two Brad decades Brad's later. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, <laughs> like, I know. Like, I like there's so many like Borat pieces <laughs> that have to like, like once you have something that succeeds on such a tr- huge level, and like you brought it up, Kyle, this had to have been in the BBC because mm-hmm. look, we're we're three Americans on this podcast. We have no restraint for this type of pacing. No, this could have never not. worked. No, <laughs> like, no, no. That's no. Like if, Rob, if Rob Deirdrick tried to like host uh, a Ghost Watch <laughs> on like some sort of ridiculousness version of Ghost Watch, I would not fucking care. No, the closest all. we ever got to 
anything like this was like and even then they trimmed it to like 40 minutes and everyone knew it was fake before it happened was like the alien autopsy like oh, yeah. special That's that right. we run on fiction. fox <laughs> you know what <laughs> like, okay. fiction sorry you know what <laughs> yeah. would be you know what would be really fun is if there was a New Year's Eve ball drop horror broadcast that Ooh. sort of somehow happened in Times Square. This boy this... has never seen New Year's Evil, has he? <laughs> no, but I know what you're saying. Like that's the one way you could get people. I'm like, to I'm pay just trying to think of what is it. the thing that people could all like be like. I know what that looks like, and sure. then yeah. buy into it. Uh, I also, I think still the, kind of sc- is... the scale of that is large. Is yeah. too that large. would be really funny. You'd have to, you'd literally have to, the only way you could pull that off is it would be like a five hour long movie that you would have to produce, essentially. Ugh. You would have to somehow get Shudder to, to believably convince people that you should stream their network for New Year's Eve mm-hmm. and well, have no, that, something that, that lasts anyway. the entirety no. of the ball drop. No, but, like, that, people would that, already that be suspicious. Work, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like it's not gonna work if it's on Shutter. Listen, yeah. mm-hmm. so here's the thing: is that I, I think it's hilarious that we're trying to conjecture like how we could do this again because we can't. You, you can't. Yeah, I I truly I don't know. think that 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 it's gonna work. Like, and also you're kind of a dick if you do it. You know, yeah. well at <laughs> like, this point in time, yeah, like it's true. It's it is, is what it is. At maximum mediocrity, people say things like, I don't dress like this on the regular basis. This isn't my, you know, pooping uniform. This is not <laughs> <laughs> And they also say things like, the, the nurses are usually either angels of mercy or whores. Every episode is a new experience where you get to know people that aren't famous, but should be. Why are you my facing Floyd Mayweather in the what? My co-host Morgan and I track down the people you didn't know you needed to hear from. It's like hot sex in a mug. We are the Maximum Mediocrity Podcast, and we are on all major podcasting platforms. We'll be waiting for you. I think we're at that point where we can talk about double features. If I was an old Fucking British goodness. fogey, maybe. <laughs> and uh, for my double feature, I'm going to name 15 movies. No, I'm just going <laughs> to... You already I'm did, man. I'm going to say one that I already said, Late Night with the Devil. Like, I think that... As much as there are other films that have gotten compared to Ghost Watch, as far as a movie where you have, you know, an expert and a cynic on a talk yeah. show oh, yeah. and like, like it just, it really fully the setup and the plot beats hit the same. Like if you were to tell me that the actual concept of Late Night for Devil, Late Night with the Devil was originally just like, what if we saw Ghostwatch from the studio's perspective? perspective. Mm-hmm. I, I like, wouldn't I'd doubt like, that yeah. that was the nucleus of the story. Or yeah, the concept, it had you know? to have been. It had to have been. It makes sense to but, me now. But yeah, that, that feels like an A to B in mm-hmm, a very easy sure. way to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Scott, what do you think? Um, well, I mean, I would be remiss not to give a second shout out to our boy, Chris La Martina for yeah. WNUF Halloween special because it, to me, feels like a fun Americanization of this. And I don't feel yeah. like it's derivative. I think that it's homage. And so I love well, that. You know what? That's that's how it works, honestly, is that you're right. You can never do Ghost Watch as Ghost Watch is, which right. is like a live broadcast. But you could feasibly trick someone into believing that an old vintage tape was real, right? Well, like also, that it was... a. It, I agreed and I also really like the fact that WNUF and spoiler alert is not supernatural no no yeah. but so I mean that, that's great. great that's what makes it work but so we, that I wanted to give a shout out to Chris because love him so much but and I love WNUF um, but the movie that I actually would double feature with this because I also agree late night with the devil is awesome and that's actually be my what did I watch because I never talked about it on the show did I no, I don't think so. I know okay. I mentioned it. I'll once, make but... a real quick blurb about it. But yeah. Blair Witch, Blair Witch Project, yeah. I think, is the other movie nice. that worked in. It, it was of a time. I went and saw it, and I, and and the internet was young enough that I was like, "This can't be real. This can't be. This is. It's just plausible deniability for ninety minutes. That's all you needed to do mm-hmm. to have a fucking great time." And so, I mean, that's that's what I would pick because I feel like it accomplished the same thing. So WNUF is like the one that came to mind. I actually am surprised that we all didn't 
immediately say that at the, at the count of three. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, we should. It, that's that's the one. Um, I had I had mentioned host, which uh, mm-hmm. was a surprise double feature to me uh, on the show that you all witnessed that live. Um, but the one that I I have in my brain is the last broadcast and mm-hmm. um, last broadcast. Obviously, very very comparable and compare uh, you know talked about in the same vein of Blair Witch. Um, I like that one a little bit more. It had a little bit more. It felt like it had a little bit more like technology aspect of what we're talking about as opposed to like strict just urban legends like Blair Witch did. Um, so I think that it, it works in a lot of ways uh, in that capacity because Last Broadcast kind of has this like diving into like this is a true unsolved mystery type thing. Um, and it, does, it doesn't hold up on a second, third watch really it's sort of uh, of its time and place like i love that ghost watch sounds like it has rewatchability uh even if you know kind of what's happening uh last broadcast i don't think has that but it, yeah. if you've not seen it it's it's worth checking out i i mean i think that ghost watch has rewatchability in the same way that wnuf has rewatchability not uh, i mean i could rewatch wnuf like 10 times Ghostwatch maybe like one more time and I'm probably tapped out for yeah. for my life. But like back in the 90s there was those like magic secrets finally revealed yes. shows. Oh my and, god. And the yeah. but but the way that they would do it was you would see the magic trick and then they would show you how the magic trick was done and then they would do the magic trick a second time. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's kind of what it's like watching Ghostwatch the second time is That's like cool. you've seen yeah. the magic trick and now you're seeing the magic trick with the understanding of what the magic trick is. Yeah. All right. Well, Tuesday, October 1st on HMMpodcast.com, there will be scare packages that you could buy. Uh, $25, get a mystery shirt. Just let us know your size. Also, you know what? In the comments, you should probably let us know what shirts you may already have from us so we can avoid sending you a duplicate if at all possible. Uh, and you'll get a shirt, you'll get a bunch of goodies, and you'll have a good time. We're all going to have a great time. We love the scare package. It helps us kind of clear out some of our stock and put some money towards getting new badass shirts for you guys in the new year. So help us out with that. We'll get you some great stuff for a good deal. Uh, Hit up our website, hmmpodcast.com, to find our store. Also, hit up our Patreon, patreon.com backslash HMN podcast and HMN podcast is how you find us on all social medias. So all of that, you got it. You understand it. We're going to talk about what we've been reading, listening to, etc. I am still on my book list, but I think this is the last book uh, that I'm going to mention of the five that I read while I was at Comic-Con. Uh, and I, I know that I am not going to pronounce this person's name correct at all. Timothy Javonsky. I want to say it's pronounced. Uh, and he put out a book called Never Been Kissed in 2022. Uh, it's a YA romance novel. But why I wanted to mention this one and why I like this one so much is that it's inspired by the Mahonan Drive-In. <laughs> um, it is Love a book that. about a kid who finishes college with a film degree. Uh, and every summer he works at the local drive-in in his small town in Pennsylvania. And... He finds out that they're about to tear down the drive-in and it's about him trying to get it considered a historical location so that he can keep the drive-in. And I, we're going to get the author on YOK at some point, but I messaged, I was like messaging him in real time from the airplane. And I said, I have to ask if this is based on Mahone and driving because I know that they literally just went through this whole process a year ago. And he goes, it's based on the drive-in near my house and Mahonan. He goes, I I was following the Mahonan stuff very closely at the time as like a guy just outside of Philadelphia. And uh, I, you know, those were my big inspirations. So um, it's just, a, you know, it's a nice like coming of age queer romance novel that also is just completely a love letter to loving cinema and the power of cinema and the community of like coming together at a drive-in with a bunch of friends and it just it checks so many fun boxes i really really had a lot uh, a good time with never been kissed so uh highly recommend it very cool i promised that i was going to say something about the new adams family movie so um i'll do that first and then i'll say a quick thing about um, late night as well but um, so Hellhole dropped um, by the time this came out about a month 
ago on Shutter. Um, I watched it. Like I was very excited because it was creature feature. Um, I was excited yeah. to see what they could do. Um, it's kind of boring. Uh, I didn't like the 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 music choices were very jarring for me, and um, I don't think that bombastic creature feature works for what they do. Uh, so I mean, I like them trying things, and I hope that it finds an audience that likes it. But between myself and a lot of the comments that are a lot of the reviews I've seen on Shutter, it is not. Saw someone post on Facebook that they gave it like a one star review and said like it's it hooked us in the beginning and then it lost us. The concept and it never cool. got us back. Yeah. yeah, the concept's cool, but everybody's unlikable. Everybody does the most unrealistic thing. Um, and it just doesn't resolve. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, like, again, I can I, I tell you a weird thing I realized though the other day while looking me. into it. This, I think, is the first film that's fully just directed by the mom and dad and none of the kids. Whereas wow. Hellbender, the yeah. I think the daughter was the main was director the main behind director. it. Yep. And I'm like, there might be something to be said there. Mm, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. It just I, it just didn't have super nice family. Like I don't no, want to be trashing right, anyone but, in the family, but no, I feel like they might be missing wins. That. You know, like when you're <laughs> yeah, making you this many films on your own dime and on your own time. Um, I mean, I'm sure they have. And that. as a, I can only imagine as a family unit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that is. I mean, think about all the things that you go through. Fucking as a as a single person, let alone maybe as a married couple let alone maybe as a family with uh, kids that are of a certain age, like just mm-hmm. whatever, take whatever age group and range. Like those are all different experiences. I wonder how significantly that plays into what they do. You know, this like, is also definitely beyond their usual not that that scope m- matters, but you know, no, I, yeah, I get what you're saying, but I also think that they know, their will... whole gimmick, their whole gimmick is a family. So it's hard yes. not to be like, what's got, what's up. Right. Right. So, I mean, they definitely were trying new things, and I want them to try th- new things. I don't want them to make mm-hmm. the same movie twice. But this one just didn't work for me. So there we go. Um, but Late Night with the Devil, I know I talked so much shit about it because of the whole AI thing, and I still stand by what I said with the fact that they could have just thrown real artists a couple hundred bones a piece, and yeah. Yeah, they, if they would have spent an extra thousand bucks on three AI stills that they used, it would have been a completely untouchably great film. I think that the movie conceptually is awesome. I think it's shot well. I think it's acted well. I knew exactly what I was getting into, but I think that it still looks fantastic. And I think that their budget was perfect. And I, I, yeah. I, it really hit all the beats for me, except for the use of AI. So, um, yeah. you know, I really, really enjoyed the watch. I felt satisfied when I watched it, you know, like at the end of watching yeah. it. So that was that's my take on it. I mean, I, I, I it's it's so hard to have that caveat and that disgruntledness on top mm. of how much I truly enjoyed the film. Yeah, it really is a bummer. I watched The Black Hole uh, from 1979. Like, yeah, like okay, that's Disney. what I thought you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This really <laughs> hot porno uh, from, I'm just kidding. Um, it, the Black Hole. Too hot hole, for HMN, uh, October. Too hot for HMN. <laughs> the Black Hole, 1979, uh, as, as, as I've talked about on the show before, my wife and I, uh, whenever we sort of... Uh, feel like it slash can get the time we've oh, been Disney one. Okay. Um, we've been going through the Disney studio releases as truly as available to us like uh, you know we're not seeking out a lot of the the nature docs or the weird sort of adventure stuff but we so we've made it to 1979 the black hole which is available on Disney plus um, you know it has Anthony Perkins in it it's a space adventure film that is full of existential dread uh yep. really uh, uh, uh the strange one of the strangest robots if we were to rank <laughs> sort of film <laughs> robots uh the black hole robot would would be up there for sure uh and, and it has some truly scary moments of revealing what happens in an alternate dimension you know through a black hole and again through kind of a disney lens and i mean this is an expensive film but also sort of a, 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 a it's both expensive and cheap at the same time like they, they've cheaped out on certain things but the expense is, is is put into other moments and other environments and settings of the film and it's 
uh, you know, if you if you just have a couple of Doritos and sit back and watch the black hole, uh, you're in for a trip. It's really kind of a wild film, and I and I know that, you know, there's. It wasn't didn't make a lot of money at the box office. It was like a twenty million dollar movie, and it made like thirty five. Like it wasn't. It's not a flop, but it wasn't a huge success. You know, seventy nine Disney is not like a great time. You know, the next thing is Watcher in the Woods, and I, you know, as much as I love Watcher in the Woods and think that eventually we'll probably talk about it on the show, it, 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 it's not a great flick. <laughs> you know, there's 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 things that are this, and it's scary. There's talk. There, Disney is doing kind of like scary adventure stuff in this moment. Um, but it's really kind of it's if you're into space adventures, you know, we watched uh, what was uh, which planet of the apes did we watch beyond the planet of the apes Be- beneath the planet beneath of the apes. beneath, you know, it reminded me a lot of beneath the planet of the apes. You know, there's like a whole other culture. And, ah, so it was flawless. Things. Got it. Yeah, absolutely. Completely <laughs> flawless. Uh, a perfect film. And I, I do. I, I mean, I recommend it. It, it is sort of a, a certain type of movie, and it feels antiquated at times, but it also feels really interesting. Uh, and, and apparently for children, I, it didn't feel that way. Uh, I was freaked out. Um, so it, it's it's fun. So bla- the Black Hole uh, from 79 is, is one that I'd recommend. All right, and I recommend y'all tune in next week as we start to dive into our official Halloween picks. So stay tuned for more Horror Movie Night. listening to the Geekscape Network.